We serve a mighty God. This is what we are talking about tonight. Never give up. Never give up. No matter what comes against you. No matter how you feel. You know the enemy, the enemy sometimes work with lying feelings. Amen. Sometimes the enemy could just just attack you and try to work on you through your feelings and through your emotions. There's such a thing is called that is called lying feelings. Thank God we walk by faith and not by sight nor feelings. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's jump right into the word of God here in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. This is what we are talking about tonight. Never give up. I'm telling you, everyone reaches that point sometimes where it seems like, man, is this even worth it? Everyone every now and again feels like throwing the towel in, but you just can't do that. Jesus said in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1, Jesus said, and he, the Bible says, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. The word faint right there means to give up. So Jesus right here is using a parable to this end, to drive this point home, that men ought always to pray and not to give up. And you know, the greatest temptation to give up is always when you are at the point of a miracle. It's always when you are at the point of a breakthrough. It's always when you are at the point of a supernatural turnaround. That's when the enemy launches his greatest attacks of discouragements and want you to feel down in your soul. So Jesus said, men are always to pray and not to faint. The word faint right there means to give up. And like I was saying, when you are when you are the closest to a breakthrough, that's when Satan launches some of the greatest attacks against your emotions, against your feelings, against your mind. But listen to this. I list, let me let me go down this list here. It's not on my slide presentation, but I just felt the Holy Ghost had me jot some things down right before we started. Lying feelings. All of a sudden, you just have a sense of hopelessness discouragement sets in on you. Satan began to attack your mind. Satan begins to attack your mind with all kind of lies and this is some of the lies that he would tell you. Things will never change. Have any one of you been feeling like that? Things will never change. That devil is a lie. Amen? This is another thing. He tries to get you to analyze and look at everything from a natural human standpoint. And this is what it looks like. It looks like it should work out, but it didn't. Man, did this, did my, my calculator can't even come up with the answer for this one. He begins to bombard your minds with thoughts that tear down your faith. Like I said, he, you have a sense of hopelessness. You feel like you've already lost. Those are all attacks from hell. Anytime the enemy launches that type of intense attack on you, dear friend, you can rest ashore that you are on your way to a miracle. You are on your way to a breakthrough. See, the, I, I feel the Holy Ghost, my God, listen here. The God we serve, he, the Bible says he cannot lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. The Bible says, and even if we don't remain faithful, the Bible says yet God will still remain faithful because he cannot deny himself. Let me tell you something. People who give up easily never enjoy victory. They never enjoy victory. And listen to this. People who give up easily, they never get the benefits of championship. See, there are benefits that come along with being a champion. There are benefits that come along with getting the victory. When David got the victory, King Saul said, a man who kills Goliath. King Saul said, this man's entire family is going to be tax-free. I'm going to give him a house. I'm going to give him my daughter. You're going to get to be the king's son-in-law. Glory to God. That's the rewards of championship. There's a certain level of respect that comes along with being a champion. 
Anytime you think, the minute we mention the name of David, everyone thinks about the story of how he killed Goliath. That's because David earned a certain level of respect. Are you listening to this? David earned a certain level of respect because he was a victor. He was a conqueror. When you think about Joshua, the minute we mention the name Joshua, some of the first stories that come to your mind is how Joshua conquered Jericho. The walls of Jericho fell flat after Joshua marched around it seven times and on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times and when they shouted, the walls fell flat. Amen? When you think about Caleb, one of the first things, when you think about Joshua and Caleb, Guess what comes to mind? Conquering the promised land. So there's a certain level of respect that comes along with being a champion. And I believe I'm talking to some people on this webinar tonight who are on their way to being a champion, who are on their way to being more than conquerors, who are on their way to overcoming some of the greatest obstacles that you have faced in your entire walk of faith with the Lord Jesus. You about to get a breakthrough. And that's why the Holy Spirit gave me this message tonight to encourage you, never give up. Can someone repeat those words? Say, I'll never give up. Come on, somebody. Come on, just let it come out of your mouth. Say, I'll never give up. I'll never give up. I'm more, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus that loves us. If God be for me, who can be against me? Glory to God. I said, if God be for me, who can be against me? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. The book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10. The Bible says this. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. If you give up in the day of adversity, if you give up in the day of calamity, my God, if you wave the white flag and throw the towel in, the Bible says your strength is small. But just the mere fact that you made it to this webinar, just the mere fact that you are still standing, that means your strength is not small. Your strength is great. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all to stand, stand with your loins girt about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Taking on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench not some but all the fiery darts of the enemy. Come on, say it again. I'll never give up, devil. I'll never give up. I'll never give up. I ain't about to throw the towel in because I'm too close to the miracle. I preached a message some years ago called Don't Give Up. You're on the brink of a miracle. Don't give up. The minute discouragement begins to set in, you're on the verge. You're on the brink. You are right at the last point of where God's about to give you a miracle. Praise God. So this is my message to you tonight. Never give up. Never give up. I said never give up. Glory to God. Listen to this. Let's go on our second point here. Be specific in your prayers. Be specific. Luke chapter 18 verse 2 and 3 says this. Jesus said, there was in a city a judge which fed not God, neither regarded man. This judge didn't fear God, neither did he regard man. Listen to this. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. We know the Bible says in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Your adversary, the devil, he goes about like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour. Who've been praying that prayer? God, avenge me. Restore to me all that was stolen from me. Restore to me all that was lost. The Bible says he'll restore unto you the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm has taken away from you. Now listen to this. So Jesus said, he's using this parable to drive upon him. He said in this parable, there was in the city a judge. He was unjust. He didn't regard, he didn't fear God, nor did he regard man. And there was a widow woman that came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. Now I want you to see something here. This judge was ruthless. 
He was a ruthless judge. But what I want you to see is that this woman didn't play religious games. She was specific in her request. She was, I mean, listen, she had a single focus. She's, she had one thing on her mind. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. And that very thing, I want you to hear me out. The thing that is consuming your mind, that prayer request that's consuming your heart, the greatest desire that's on your heart, the number one thing that you that's consuming you that you know you want God to do for you, that's the thing you need to pray about. That's the thing you need to focus on. Because that thing that is consuming your heart, that thing that is consu that, that's demanding your attention, that's the very thing that God is about to answer. That's the very thing that God the very area that God is about to give you a breakthrough in. Glory to God. So that's exactly what you need to focus on. The paramount issue. The thing that, that's consuming you. That's why the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you what? The desire. The desire. The thing that you are passionate about. Amen? Man, I'm preaching to somebody. That thing that you are passionate about. That thing that you are praying about. You're driving your car and tears is coming down on your face and you are praying about it. You're in the restroom and it, it's consuming you. You're sitting at the kitchen table. It's consuming you. You take a walk in the park. It's it's consuming you. That's the thing that God wants to give you a miracle in. That's the area you about to get a breakthrough in. My God, I'm talking to somebody. Let's move on to our third point. Persistence pays off. Glory to God. I said persistence and determination, it pays off. Listen to what Jesus said in verse 4 and 5 of Luke 18. Jesus said, and he would not for a while. He did not pay any attention to this woman. And he would not for a while, but afterward, glory to God. Man, I tell you, this, this, I guess I'm preaching to myself tonight. The Bible says, and he would not for a while. This judge paid no attention to this woman's request. She was coming to this judge every day before him, pleading to this judge, avenge me of my adversary. Just one single prayer, avenge me of my adversary. Now, I beg to differ with some of the people in the faith movement that would say, if you pray about the same thing more than once, that's, that's a prayer of unbelief. The devil is a liar. I say the devil is a liar. Jesus prayed for a blind man more than one time. I dare you to tell him he's an unbeliever and prayed the prayer of unbelief. The devil is a liar. Now watch this. The Bible says, and he would not for a while. He would not avenge this woman. He paid no attention to her case. But the Bible says, but afterward, this judge said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming. That's the key words there. Lest by her continual coming, she weary me. Glory to God. I'm talking to some people that you've got God's attention. Glory to God. I say you got God's attention. Your prayer request is about to be granted. Listen to this. This judge says, unless... Through her strong determination, she's about to wear me out. The point here is persistence in prayer pays off. You can't give up. Tonight may be the night that you pray the last time about a particular situation and there's the breakthrough and there's the answer and there's the miracle and there's the supernatural turnaround. That's why Joshua had to march around the walls of Jericho. He had to march around the walls of Jericho seven times. What if they would have gave up on day one? They did this for seven days. Are you listening to this? What if he would have gave up after he marched around the walls of Jericho just one time? What if he would have gave up on the sixth time of marching around the walls of Jericho? He would have given up on his miracle. He would have given up on his breakthrough because it, he was only one more day from the miracle. He was only one more, one more march away from the miracle. How about Naaman when the prophet Elisha said, go and dip in the Jordan River seven times and your flesh you're, you're going to be cleansed from leprosy. Na Listen, Naaman didn't even want to do it. Sometimes God may set, send you in some of the most unlikely places. 